במפזו. Tara Diddle Snicker Snee Jivet Wabbit Hey guys, here at SCF Kids, we're all about the Bible. We actually take a look at it every single week we're together. There's so much in here that we can learn, but I think my friends and I can tell you the main story in the Bible in just one minute. Think we can do it? Let me grab my friends. All right, you guys ready to tell the whole story of the Bible in one minute? Yep. All right, hit the timer. It was perfect, just the way God wanted it. God would actually hang out with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. But did it stay that way? Nope. Adam and Eve had one rule. Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But they did anyway. They disobeyed God and sin. That's right. You see, God is holy and perfect. And sin? It's not. So people became separated from God. And all that took place in the first few chapters of the Bible. The rest of the Bible is about how God fixed our sin problem so we could be with him one day. And what was God's plan? Jesus! God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross, and he gave us a way to be with him forever. And that's the story of the Bible. Now, there are a ton of other stories in there, but, 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 but all those stories point to just one thing. God's plan to save us. The world was perfect. Sin ruined it. But God had a plan. And his plan was... Jesus! Oh, stop the timer. We did it. Just barely under one minute. It truly is an amazing story. Right, guys? Yeah! And another thing Jesus loved to do was to teach people using stories. You guys like stories, right? Thought so. And these stories explain something important that he wanted the people to know. It's called a parable. And we're gonna take a look at a few of those today. you say? Well, you've come to the right place, kids. I'm all about story time. In fact, they like to call it story time with Tessa. What do you say? I, I have a book with me. Can I read it, Jenna? Can I read it? Read it. 
Oh, sure. Go ahead, Tessa. Great! Find a comfy spot, kids. Let's read if you give a cat a cupcake. Have anybody read this book before? Take it away, Tessa. If you give a cat a cupcake, he'll ask for some sprinkles to go with it. When you give him the sprinkles, he might spill some on the floor. Cleaning up will make him hot, so you'll give him a bathing suit and take him to the beach. He'll want to go in the water and build a sand castle too. Then he'll look for seashells. He'll find a few other things as well. He'll put them in his pail and try to pick it up, but it'll be too heavy. He'll decide he needs to work out at the gym. First, he'll warm up on the treadmill. Then he'll lift a weight or two. He might even try a karate class. <laughs> That's funny, kids. After the gym, he'll want to go to the park. When you get there, he'll see the rocks. He'll climb as high as he can go. And at the top, he'll see the lake. And he'll want you to take him rowing. He'll be the captain and you'll have to row. Then he'll notice the merry-go-round and want to go for a ride. He'll want you to go for a ride too. You'll choose the horse with the purple mane and he'll get the whale. The whale will remind him of a science museum. He'll ask you to take him there. First, he'll find the, the, the what? The what? The dinosaurs. Then he'll visit the Hall of Apes. When the museum closes, you'll be the last to leave. On the way home, you'll pass by the beach. You'll help him gather all of his things. Then he'll want to race you. When you get home, he'll empty the sand from his shoes. He might spill some on the floor. Seeing the sand on the floor will remind him of sprinkles. He'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if you give him some sprinkles, he'll want a cupcake to go with them. There you have it, kids. A nice short story. A parable, if you will. Um, Tessa, it's not really a parable. Jesus taught in parables which were important things he needed the people to know about his kingdom or how he wanted them to live. What? You mean it's not like the story of if you give a cat a cupcake? Yeah, no, not really. Do you like watching videos? Why, yes, of course I do. I love watching TV. Well, I have a little video today that explains a few of the parables Jesus used. You want to check it out? Why, of course. Of course. All right, kids, let's check this out with Tessa. One day, Jesus went out and sat by the sea. Large crowds of people gathered around him. So he got into a boat and sat down. All the people stood on the shore. Then Jesus told the people parables or stories to teach them about the kingdom of God. Jesus' disciples asked him, Why do you teach in parables? Jesus answered, Not everyone will understand the hidden truths about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus reminded them about some of the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Some people look, but they do not see. Hmm. They hear, but they do not listen or understand. Oh. Jesus made these prophecies come true. Jesus said, 
You are blessed because you do understand. Jesus told a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a man planted in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it grows taller than the garden plants. It becomes a tree and the birds come and build nests in the branches. Jesus continued, The kingdom of heaven is like leaven or yeast that a woman mixed into 50 pounds of flour. The leaven makes the dough rise. Jesus told another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field that a man found. He reburied it and then he joyfully sold everything he had and bought that field. Then Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine oh. pearls. When he found one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. Oh. When Jesus finished teaching the crowds, he left that place and went to Nazareth. The kingdom of God is growing in the world. The kingdom is valuable and worth giving everything for. While we wait for Jesus to return and fully set up his kingdom, we carry out the mission of telling others about King Jesus, who rescues sinners. Jesus told stories about what God's kingdom is like. First, he compared the kingdom of heaven to a mustard seed. Can you even see that there? It's so tiny, it's so very small. It's about one to two millimeters. But when a mustard seed grows, what happens? A mustard seed becomes a tree that can reach up to 20 feet tall and 20 feet wide. And the birds even nest in its branches. Now think about the yeast. When you mix a small amount of it into dough, it starts to rise. It slowly affects the dough and causes it to get bigger and bigger. God's kingdom is like that. It started small with just 12 disciples, but it spread and now people all over the world follow Jesus. Jesus also told a story about a man who was working in a field. What did the man find in the field? You got it, a treasure. And he knew the treasure was valuable, so he sold everything he had to buy that field and get the treasure. God's growing kingdom is more valuable than anything. The kingdom of God continues to grow today as we tell other people the good news of the gospel. And it's a treasure that we should seek after. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Tyler from Milton, Wisconsin asks, Where is God's kingdom? What does it look like? Tyler, that is a great question. And here's the answer. Really, God's kingdom is everywhere because God's kingdom is where God rules. And God is our king. He rules over everything and his kingdom will not fail. So in one sense, just look around and this is God's kingdom. But in another sense, we're waiting for God's kingdom to be here in perfection because we know that people sin, we rebel against God's kingdom, his authority, and we do our own thing. And so the world doesn't look like it's supposed to look because of our sin. So we're waiting for God's kingdom to be here perfectly and that's gonna happen when Jesus returns. We know that Jesus said when he returns, he's gonna put an end to all sin, all rebellion, all death, all suffering, everything bad will stop. And the world would be like it should have been all along, perfect again, with God ruling perfectly over his people who obey him perfectly. So God's kingdom, when you look around, it doesn't look like it's supposed to look like because we're waiting for Jesus to come and set it up in perfection. And so that's what our hope is in Christ, that he will return and God's kingdom will be here in perfection with God ruling perfectly over everything. So here's a question back for you. What do you think God's kingdom would be like when Jesus returns?
Hey kids, I've had so much fun with you already today. I thought, why not play a memory verse game? So, seeing as you're talking lots about parables today, and parables have words, because they're stories, and words have letters, and so I brought here a bucket of letters. I'm gonna dig inside, find a letter, and if that letter is in any of the words in our verse, Take it right out. Got it? Round one. Here we go. Can't seem to get one. Oh, oh, oh. What letter is it there? The letter C. All right, kids. Any words that have the letter C are going to come out of the verse. Ready, set, go. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1, 13 to 14. Wow! For a new verse, you guys are pretty smart. Let me see. What other word, or I mean, not a word, letter. What other letter can I find in here? Yum, 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 yum. Oh, ah, uh, the letter I. You found the letter I. There's a lot of them in there. So let's read it together. One, two, three. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1, 13 to 14. Great job. All right, do you think you can find one more letter? I mean, actually, maybe this time when you look for a letter, you can, whatever you grab with your mouth is the letters we're gonna take out. All right, here we go. What do you got this time? Uh, a V? O? Whoops. And a W. All right, kids, one last time. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1, 13 to 14. Wow, kids, you're pretty great, but I'm not really sure. This is my first time here, and I'm not sure what you guys do after your memory verse game. Do you know? Is it the same thing from last week? Oh, you're gonna go get your Bible. Is there a fun song for that? That's fantastic. All right, you guys go get your Bible and meet me back here. Well, that was a fun time in our memory verse game. But did you get your Bible? We're going to open it up to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. It says, You yourselves used to be in the darkness, but since you have become the Lord's people, you are in the light. So you must live like people who belong to the light. Before coming to faith in Jesus, all of us are trapped in darkness, spiritual darkness. We cannot see the truth of God and we cannot obey him. When God saves us, we become citizens of Jesus' kingdom, which is a kingdom of light. And in Christ, we can love and obey God. So we're going to sing a couple songs now that talk about how Jesus is the light, our light, and we can follow after him. Let's sing together. Dark 
let's wrap up our episode for today. When we believe in Jesus, then we become part of the kingdom of God. And when we tell others about Jesus, we help the kingdom to grow. Remember the mustard seed? God's kingdom is also worth giving up everything for because it's valuable. And that is what Jesus wanted people to know about the kingdom of God. 
Would you repeat this after me? God's kingdom is growing and valuable. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for establishing a perfect kingdom. Thank you for inviting us into it. Use us in your plans to grow your perfect kingdom. Amen.